Welcome to this Sunday service from St Columba's Church in Ennis, County Clare, with the churches of Kilnasula and Christ Church, Spanish Point. Today we reflect upon the nature of love, that the narrative, the essential story of the Bible, is of humanity wrestling with our darker side, which sometimes prevails for a while, but that we are always called back to a pilgrimage towards forgiveness, compassion and love. The gift of God is love and the commandment of God is love. They are one and the same. And so we start our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. Circle us, Lord, keep comfort within and discouragement without. Keep love within and hatred out. Circle us, Lord, keep protection near and danger afar. Keep light within, keep darkness out. Surround us, Lord, keep peace within and fear without. Eternal Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround us on every side, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside, you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the first letter of John. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Our reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parents loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water, only but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies. The Spirit is the truth. Here ends the reading. Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, As my Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. 
Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, in just a few brief sentences, we see the whole scheme of God's relationship with Jesus, his disciples, and with us and our world. A relationship that encapsulates both the awesome simplicity of God's love and the over-complexity of our response. Of course, one might ask, what has all this to do with the notion of commandments? A word that has frequently recurred in our readings. Now, our immediate reaction may be to think of a God who is loading us down with chains of rules and regulations. But in fact, the very opposite is the case for the chain of which our gospel speaks is made of links forged in love. Not a chain that binds, but one that sets free. Jesus keeps the commandments of the Father and he is loved. The disciples are called to keep the commandments of Jesus and they too are loved. The disciples have communicated that same gospel, the commandments of Jesus to us, and we in our turn are loved. And what is the rule that holds this chain together? What is the commandment that we are called upon to honour? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. The gift of God is love, and the commandment of God is love. They are one and the same. We are called not as slaves or servants, not as people subject to authoritarian rule, but as his friends to love one another, as we are loved by the Father and the Son. Friends, families, neighbours, these are the people we are called to love. And also those just passing in the street or standing by the bus stop, strangers met in the shop, the pub, the restaurant, these also are the people we are called to love. And if lockdown has taught us anything, these are the people that we need in the everyday, the random, the routine, the simple things of daily living. And we're not told to love them when we're in the mood, or if we like them, or if they have a similar outlook or hold political views or background convivial to us. Instead, we are called to love without reservation and without limit, perhaps even especially when we find them different, unusual, hard to like, for they too are links in the chain. Love, so St Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians, is patient and kind. It is neither envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And ultimately, it is all we shall ever need. The preacher and broadcaster J. John once spoke of a funeral that he attended for a rich uncle. Did he leave much, he was asked by a friend. He answered, oh yes, he left everything. Except love. Over the last few weeks, as we have journeyed through Lent and then into Easter and the new life that it heralds, we have considered matters of faith and of hope. We have seen faith as choosing to respond to the call of God in all our lives, and faith as a relationship with Christ that 
requires some sacrifice and determination. A relationship that requires work to flourish and grow beyond the doubts that we have and the fears that can sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. And we have also seen that our faith depends on hope itself. That our faith is kept alive through courage and trust. Trust that one day we will know fully, even as we are now fully known. But underlying and transcending both faith and hope is love itself. For love is the aim, the fruition, and the ultimate expression of both faith and hope. Love was before all things and will remain when all other things have passed away. The narrative, the essential story of the Bible is that of humanity wrestling with our darker side, which sometimes prevails for a while, but that we are called back to a pilgrimage heading towards forgiveness, compassion, and love. The story of creation is a story about love. Scripture gives us the image of God looking upon the world and seeing that it was good. Throughout ancient history, as the whole scope of the Old Testament teaches, the ancient people wrestled with, struggled with, and often rejected the notion of a loving God again and again. A primitive partisan God, an angry God, a God of capricious, wanton acts of cruelty, and a God who had favourites that they understood. Throughout the time of Abraham, Moses, David, and all the prophets, they continue to vacillate between the notion of a God just for them and a God committed to the world and all mankind. But throughout that struggle were the signs, the demands, and the guiding impetus of love. Jesus was prepared to die upon a cross rather than compromise his teaching, his life, and the new understanding and relationship with God that he forged for us. That too was an act of immense love. And despite our doubts, our failings, and our betrayals, that bridge of love between God and us remains in place, unshakable and unassailable. For love endures, it forgives, it never gives up, it understands, it has faith, it has hope. Such is the love that is ours to receive, and such is the love that we are called upon to share, however imperfectly, one with another. Love is the sign, the proof, and the measure of our faith. The life of a Christian, a priest, and a congregation is ultimately measured by one standard only, the quality of our love. We are not called to love conditionally, with strings attached, given only to those who return our love. Instead, we are called to a much higher and more testing standard, one of which we shall inevitably fall short, but we still have to try. We have to hold ourselves to that standard, rejoice when we receive it from others, and repent when we fail to show it in our own lives. And of course, how easily we can fail when we find it easier to think ill of someone rather than give them the benefit of the doubt, when we bear grudges of past wrongs, real or imagined, and somehow feel that it is down to the other person to restore the balance, or worse still, perhaps we don't even want the rift to be healed when we allow ourselves to concentrate on all the things that annoy us about someone, rather than focus on some aspects that, if we allowed ourselves, might even help us to admire them. When we hold ourselves back, expecting others to make all the running, 
ready to receive friendship, perhaps, but unwilling to be the first to make the offer. When we cannot, or more likely will not, forgive, we allow our temper to master our dealings with others, seemingly unaware or uncaring as to the hurt we may inflict. When we all too often allow ourselves to judge others, those for whom life has not turned out so well as for us, the homeless, the ones who are adrift, those with lifestyles that seem self-destructive and self-defeating, and how easily we congratulate ourselves on how much better we have done, how everything we have in life is down to our own praiseworthy effort and character. We fail to recognise how so much of our life is down to simple luck, perhaps to be born into a family that nurtured rather than abused us, to have received an education that was not thwarted by poverty, to have been helped by others rather than broken by them, to be blessed with physical and mental health when others have neither. On these occasions and so many more besides, we can fail to live up to Christ's call, and moreover, sometimes we don't even seem willing to try to aspire to his commandment. And yet we should remember that it is not guidance he offers, it is not a favour that he asks, it is not an optional extra to our faith, it is his commandment, it is a requirement, a precondition of our faith. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. We did not choose him, he chose us. We did not simply decide to become Christians, this is not a club we opted to join, any more than this is a duty we can decide to put down. He chose us. We are his chosen disciples, given a task that we must fulfil to the best of our ability. For this is the purpose of our life. We were made we were given the precious gift of life, we were born, we were chosen for this task. That we should love one another as he loved us. Amen. We are pilgrims along the way of life. Let us therefore remind ourselves of the path of faith that has brought us to this time and place. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Creator and source of love, you have given us a faith that love can transcend and conquer all things. Bless all who are seeking to live by what they believe, who listen to your word, and seek to do your will. We pray for all in their ministry and vocation, especially for any going through a time of trial. Christ, be with us, around and beside us. Guide all leaders in industry and commerce. May the goods of this world be neither hoarded nor squandered. We pray that there may be a better, fairer distribution of wealth and equitable trade between the richer and poorer nations of our world. Christ be with us, around 
and about us. You have called us to know you, to love you and to serve you. May we reveal our calling, love and service in all our dealings with friends and family, neighbour and stranger. As we pray for the kingdom, may we seek to live the kingdom. Christ, be with us, around and about us. Lord of love, be a comfort for the sorrowing, a strength for the weak, hope to the dying. We pray for all who have been injured this week, for all who have fallen into illness or disability, for all who can no longer cope on their own, that each in their trouble may know your love. Christ, be with us, around and about us. We pray for our loved ones departed and look forward to the time when we shall see and know, when we shall know and love, and when we shall love and be at one forever, united with you and all those who have gone before us. Christ, be with us, around and beside us. And now a few moments for our own concerns and prayers for those on our hearts. say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. Power and, and the glory. glory. Forever and ever. Amen. The love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one surround and encourage and bless you and all those whom you love today tomorrow and forever amen let us go in the peace of christ thanks be to god <laughs>